Hello everyone, as you can see the title of this video is 3 mistakes to avoid in the CAT VRC section. Now this might remind you of a story that some of you might have read but trust me this video is not going to be as entertaining as the story. However, this video is going to probably help you score a little bit better in the VARC section. So as you can see, I've tried to keep it short and simple. I'm only going to talk about three points. Now, These three points might have a few sub points, but on the whole, if you take care of these three mistakes, then I can assure you that your score should definitely see a little bit of improvement and if not improvement, at least consistency. So let's get started. So it says three mistakes to avoid in the CAT VARC section. What is the first mistake? Well, the first mistake is to attempt the section without a strategy. See, we plan very carefully for what we will do for DILR and to some extent for QA as well. But for VARC, for some reason, we believe that we will attempt the questions in the order that they are presented, which doesn't make any sense because each question carries the same marks, but each question is not at the same level of difficulty. So you do need to strategize. Now I'm not saying that you need to have a rigid strategy. It does need to be a little dynamic, but it has to be there. So what are some of the things you need to think about? Should I attempt VA first or RC first? Now, in case you're wondering whether I have an answer to this question, not really, it is whatever works for you. And we have another video related to CAT VARC strategy that you can take a look at in case you're not very clear about this point. But this is not the only question that you consider. There is also in what order I should attempt the passages and how many passages should I attempt. For example, if I'm merely trying to clear the cutoff, I would believe that two passages might be enough and some VA questions. But what if I'm trying to get past the 95th percentile? Are two passages going to be enough? Probably not. Maybe I'll need to do three passages. What if the test section is super easy? Could it be possible that I can attempt four passages also? Maybe. So you need to think about what is possible in that particular test. Now, the order of solving is also very important. We have to understand that as human beings, unlike robots, we do get tired. So if we start with a very difficult passage, then our efficiency will drop as we continue through the section. So why not start with something that is easy to get through? It will probably also give you a good feeling and in fact, maybe raise your energy for the rest of the test also. So pick the easiest passage first. Now there's one more point. How many VA questions? We know that typically there are eight, but do we really need to do all eight? I don't think so. We have to understand that the time is limited and this is a major decision factor. If the time were unlimited, of course, we can solve every parajumble. We could probably do all the summary questions as well, but the time is what should help you decide what you can solve and what you cannot. So in most cases, we would say that somewhere between four to six questions is good. But can you do seven? Maybe if the VA section is very easy. But a lot of us should plan for a certain range of questions to be solved instead of saying, let me just see what comes and I will try to do my best. So this is the first point. Please have a strategy. Now let's come to the second mistake that we make in our lives. Of course, not in our lives, but in the VRC section. We for some reason believe that the more we attempt, the more marks we will get, even though the test data tells us otherwise. Unless your accuracy is very high, your attempts are not going to lead to a higher score. So I'm not sure if you've done this calculation, but if your accuracy is about 50%, then you get about one mark per question attempted. But if your accuracy is even less than 50%, then you're not even getting one mark per question attempted. So make sure that your number of attempts is kept at a reasonable level. It has to correspond to your accuracy. Prioritize accuracy over attempts. Now, how do we do that? First of all, please know that when you skip a question, you lose three marks. But what if you get a question wrong? Then you lose four marks. That question is gone, plus you get a negative mark as well. So again, it's fairly easy to see that it's usually easier to simply not do something. But despite that, we make the effort of attempting that question, we spend time on it, and then we get it wrong also. Why make all this effort? The whole test is about trying to get the most marks by attempting the least number of questions. And that is what we need to do for VRC as well. 
but there's one more point. You need to aim for about 65 to 70% accuracy. Now, why am I saying this? Because it's a little difficult to go beyond this given that there are some theta questions in this section. So if you're getting about 65 to 70, you're fairly decent. You can increase the number of attempts. But if you're falling below this, then probably you're attempting too many questions. You need to reduce the number so that you can give more time per question. Now we move to the third and the final point. Focusing only on VA or RC. Of course, we do have favorites. For example, I believe I'm better at RC, but that does not mean that I don't do VA. In fact, I tend to start with VA. So let's not decide beforehand that I will do only RC or mostly RC, or I will do mostly VA because we like one more than the other. Because you see the test taker, sorry, the test setter does not really think like that. The test setter probably thinks a little bit differently from you. So you have to be flexible and you have to modify your strategy to suit the test. A lot of times you'll find that a difficult RC is compensated by maybe an easier VA section. So what if you're focusing only on RC, what will happen? You will probably not have enough time to look at the VA because you're stuck on a difficult RC. So let's take a look at the section overall. Make sure that you're attempting the easy to moderate questions in both areas. So let's not decide the strategy to be so rigid that we cannot change it if the test changes. So with this, I end my talk on the three mistakes that you need to avoid in the CAT VRC section. Please try to keep these in mind. And in case you want more information about what your strategy should be, we have a couple of more videos that will help you out. So just look at the description and we will have those links for you. Thank you for watching.